Hello everybody and welcome to our talk Reproducing Bullseye in Practice with our friend Holger Levsen. Let me introduce him quickly. Holger is a Debian user since 1995 and a Debian developer since 2007. He is working in many teams and activities inside Debian like Debian Edu, Reproducible Builds, LTS, Debian QA, as well being the founder of the Debian video team. So enjoy his talk. Hello, my name is Holger. Thanks for the introduction, Yatan. I will speak about reproducible builds in practice. This is actually a live talk um, and actually with a live audience of two people. Hello. Um, but the, the goal of the talk is to share and widen the understanding of the status of reproducible bullseye, um, which I'll go to in detail. Yatong has covered already who I am. He didn't say that I'm located in Hamburg, but that's also least important. Um, and I miss you lovely Debian people, and I also miss a lot being at DebConf, because this is not fine. This is really not fine. It's all wrong, and it is what it is, some people say. And yeah, the pandemic is just a small crisis. I'm way more concerned about the climate apocalypse, but I will not go into this and just focus on the nice world of reproducible builds. Um, so reproducible builds. Um, small introduction. The problem is really, really small. I don't tell you anything. There's source code for free software available. And most people install pre-compiled binaries, and we have no idea whether this binary really comes from this source. And that is the problem of reproducible builds. And that is the intro intro introduction I give you, because we have given many talks. If you go to reproducibles.org, there's a um, video section, and you find many good introductions why reproducible builds are useful. Um, what benefits there are and other things, I'll just concentrate on bullseye now. Uh, and or how to distribute and verify, because we have so far we covered the part how to do reproducible builds, but we have not really distributed and verified them. Um, and usually we had a, at DebConf, we always had a section what happened since the last year, and usually we did this together during DebCamp, and I just didn't have the time to it, and it's, it's nicer to do this part with other people. So this is missing in this talk. Again, if you need an introduction, um, reproducible-builds.org is our web page, and there's many videos linked, there's papers linked, there's how to sling, there's lots of stuff there. Um, so to my goals for wishes for today is to talk about the problem of CI versus rebuilds, the issues with built infos Debian net or org, but distributing built info files, then we still have some thousand packages without build, build info files in build SI. And I will show you what's wrong with deep rebuild, our tool to rebuild packages, which is in death scripts, and some other issues. And this is all not even yet covering the user interfaces and the band using reproducibles as a user. And we need to talk about this too, but first we need to solve the other problem. So that's still on the horizon, but later. So first I'd like to share my frustration um, besides the state of the world. Uh, my other frustration is that I think I've been warned about next Debian release will not be reproducible since some years. Um, so again, Bullseye will not be reproducible in practice and Bullseye will be released in a year or whenever, not a bit more than, a bit less than a year, I think. Um, frozen in February or something. And unless we, you, me act now, but I show how this is difficult. Um, so this slide is actually a slide from DebConf 19 in Brazil, where I said stretch was in theory, but not in practice. That was because at that time, dpackage just get, got into a SID and nothing was rebuilt or not much was rebuilt with it. So most packages were not reproducible. Uh, boost buster more or less the same. And now we are at bullseye and it doesn't look too good in my opinion. 
Um, but the release is still far away and we haven't frozen yet, so there's still a chance to fix this. Um, so this is a thing from Hans Christoph, a slide um, or a logo he once made for Fostem. So I have lots of bugs in this talk and it's not meant to be finger pointing these bugs at the teams because it's, it's all of us in Debian that we need to fix these bugs. Um, and I'm pointing this out because people think we, a reproducibility team, can solve them and work on them, and we work on them, and we can supply patches, but some things, they are in teams where we cannot do that much. So I need to list these. Um, again, the list of topics, and so I start with the first one, CI versus rebuilds. Um, Debian or Debian is not wrong. Many people think that Debian is 93% reproducible. And that is certainly a lie because these 93% reproducible are our CI results where we build packages twice and then compare them and say, oh yeah, you can rebuild this package. It's possible, but we don't rebuild against, we don't compare with what Debian distributes. Um, because we don't have any Debian infrastructure or reproducible builds infrastructure the re rebuild packages and compare them. Um, yeah, they, are, they build, but they don't rebuild and compare against the stuff. New York, un the New York University has a proof of concept, and but they are rebuilding actually the Jenkins build. Then I made a prototype on Jenkins Debian net using Deb rebuild, but I got stuck there because of all the bugs in Deb rebuild. Um, and Arch Linux has a rebuilder D. Um, which can rebuild Arch Linux, and because of the, the issues we I list, um, they cannot. The rebuild ID does not support rebuilding Debian. KPC YID, the author wants to do it, but see the issue number four of his GitLab project, and that it's the same issues I just described. And also, rebuild ID is written in Rust, which is a good idea because Rust is a good language. But on the other hand, all the Debian infrastructure is written in Python and Perl. So if you want to verify Debian, you need to verify or rely on Python and Perl anyway. And at the moment, we don't need to rely on Rust. If you now put Rust as a core piece of the rebuilder thing, we need to rely and trust Rust as well. So I would, I think probably it's better to do in person and Py, person or Perl, but that's the detail. And we've also discussed or thought that it would be worthwhile to have the rebuilders as part of the official build D network. Um, but that is so far just an idea. But it's an idea I wanted to share with the build D people. Hi, build D people, we want to work with you. Or I would like to hear your opinion. Um, it's an idea, we need to talk how it would be possible. Um, I get to all these issues with rebuilders in a bit. So, but first the issues with build info. So the idea is you have the source, you take a build info file, which lists the exact depends which were used in the original build. And then you do a rebuild and you get this, hopefully the same hash of the package and then you're happy. Um, so there's build info files. And at first we had build info Debian net. And now we also have build info Debian net and we should clean this up. But to explain the difference, build info, info Debian, the singular version accept, allows submissions from everyone. So Jenkins submits there, NYU submits there, and Debian results are fed into it, the official builds. So if you query a build info file from there, you get lots of build info files and it's hard to get the right one. So I set up build info Debian net, which just copies the, file, the build info files from FTP master. And FTP master, on FTP master, they are stored in a build date structure. So there's 2020 and there's 08 for August and there's 27 for today. And then there's all the build info files for today. So if you look for some build info file, you need to know when the package was built. And that is a bit cumbersome. So there's also traditional pool structure where there's whatever pool and then there's D and then there's dash in there and then you get the dash build info files. That is nice, um, but one one it's in unofficial service. In my opinion, there should be a Debian org machine serving these build info files. And 
that is that's from last year. So that was two, in 2019, there were almost a million files. So by now there are probably over a million files and it's not really big. It's 12 gigabyte files, four gigabyte links. The issue is the number of files. So you need inodes, but it's still not a big amount of data. Um, but then, <clears throat> okay, this bug, I worked around with a, with a cron on my own. But we really would like to have the built info file in the archive for or a built info for Debian org server, but one of the two so have it officially Debian officially distributing built info files. Currently Debian doesn't do that. They are just an FTP master and FTP master only Debian developers can log in and get them out. So they are not in public. The next issue is that for security Debian org, because that runs on a restricted host because of the um, um, what is this term again, the embargoed issues. So not everybody can log in there. And so the build logs and the build info files are not copied to FTP master. They are at point releases, but not during the time when you want to get the new security. Ideally, you want to verify the security update before you install it and you cannot do it because they are only published every point release. And the same is true now for LTS build info files because they are also on um, the security host so they don't get out. And Stretch LTS now has a D package which does support build info files so it would be worthwhile. So some build info files are not there and they're in a wake structure. So then last DebConf in Brazil, David Bremer came up with build info with yet another naming variation which is a nice Postgres database. So then you can actually do query. Say you want whatever dash version 2510-2 for AMD64, and then you can query which build info file it is. It's still not that easy because a build info file can be for several architectures. So it can contain whatever AMD64 and binary, uh, arch all binaries. And it's still not, but it's okay -ish. You can query them somewhat, but you also need to read with them, but it's okay. Um, and this built info database from David needs uh, FTP master um, based directory structure. So you can only use it if you have all this data on your host anyway. That is all with hmm. So I had the idea of including the build info files as part of the binary packages. And that is something Arch Linux has been implemented and is their implementation. In Debian, if you build a Debian source package, you get the binary depth um, and you get a changes file and you get a build info file. And so to rebuild, you take the sources and the build info file and you create the binaries. If the build info file were part of the binary package, then they could not contain the checksum of the binary package because they modify it. So you would need the checksum yourself. You would need to download the binary package, extract the build info file, rebuild it, and then compare that to rebuild the exact same thing. And it would solve all these problems about distributing build info files. And we wouldn't need a different machine and it would be quite straightforward. And our initial design was to have them separate these build info files and Arch Linux thought about it and decided, no, it's better to do it the other way around. And that was like two or three years ago. And I was a bit against it because it was against our design principle. But over time, I didn't see real disadvantages. And I see the huge advantage that the build info file is distributed nicely with the packages. It's on all the mirrors. Um, there is no impact on the mirrors because the binary packages, they only become a bit smaller in size and it gets compressed, but they're easily mirrored because they are mirrored with all the packages. If there's a security upload, the package would be, uh, the build info file would be immediately available with the upload. So I think that would be good. Um, right before this, this talk, I went and sent a mail to Guillaume, the dpackage maintainer and asked him and he said that is difficult from the implementation side in dpackage. But maybe it needs another wrap of around. If we go this path, I have not discussed this with the Debrusso Builds team, but I think it's worth considering whether we want to switch. Else we need to solve all these other problems. I don't know 
I'm really like feedback on this. I'm happy to discuss this, explain this thought more. And yeah, it's difficult with the current package design. Um, so, and then we have thousands of packages without build info files in bullseye still. And um, it's mostly Arch all packages because Evo from the release team thankfully did scheduled a lot bin in them use. Like when um, after the release of Bulls, uh, Buster, like in the first week of Bullseye, he scheduled like 3,000 bin in them use or something. That was really nice, but um, bin in them use for Arch all are not possible. So the question really is shall we do mass in them use scripted with Git? of, I don't know, two or 3,000 packages. And I could do the for loop now and then upload this stuff, but I'm not sure whether this is socially acceptable or technically socially. Um, I'd like to hear your opinion or what else shall we do? It's, it's around like 3,000 packages. And 3,000 proper NMUs is a really lot of work. I could also say, oh, they, they get kicked out of Bullseye, I don't know. Um, yeah, and again, this is the bug for this. Um, so yeah, this is also a question. I'd like to hear your opinion on this. Um, and then we have Dev Rebuild, which was written by Josh. Um, it's part of the Dev Scripts package. Um, and it's written in Perl. And it has some bugs. So there's no man page and no help option. Hmm. Okay, fine. Um, then it can only deal with um, non-signed build info files, but most build info files nowadays are signed. So you always need to remove the signature. It's not a big deal, but it should accept signed build info packages. Then that rebuild, some, so it takes the build info file, looks at the version of um, base packages, and then sees, okay, I need to use a stretch or a whatever busters um, base and then installs the packages. But for some reason, it's sometimes downgrade packages and downgrading is not supported and normally not done. So I think it should really just not do it. And there's more bugs. Um, for bin in them, <laughs> Use the bin in MU in Debian is a source package, and then the change log, Debian change log, is modified. And then this modified Debian change log is thrown away. So it's not part of the source package, it's not thrown away, but this modif modification of Debian change log is put into the build info file. So if you want to do a rebuild of a bin in MU, you need to take the sources, then take the build info file, um, cut the part of the change, uh, change log and put it into the sources and then rebuild it. And that deep, deep rebuild should do this. If I give it a bin in MU, a build info file for a bin in MU, it should see there's a Debian change log entry in it, add this to the existing sources change log entry and then build it. But, and there's a small bug and also create, that rebuild only creates a command line. It doesn't actually do the rebuild, it creates a command line for S build. And this command line is wrong for bin in use, which is, is an easy fix, but it's still a fix needed. Um, that rebuild also fails to download some packages from snapshot. I'm not sure why, because the packages are there. Um, more bugs in that rebuild, wishlist bugs now. Um, that rebuild creates lots of output. And if you want to feed the output into S build, then you only want the S build relevant output. So that's this bug. Um, then the command which is constructed um, uses Lincian for sbuild and that is useless because we don't want to run Lincian. We know we want to rebuild this package so it should not use Lincian. And it doesn't actually explain how to use snapshot DO, which I've, I, I've done a prototype in the Jenkins script so I figured this all out but it would be nice if that rebuild from that script would explain this to users. And more wishlist bugs. Um, that rebuild ex um, expect you to have S build set up. And it would be nice if it had a standalone or one shot mode where it would set up S build for you and then delete S build again. Because that is possible with S build, but that rebuild doesn't do it. And for just reproducing one package, that would be nice. And 
S-Rebuild doesn't download the sources. So it, you need to download the source again, and that is sometimes difficult. And in the build info file, there is the source, so S -re Dev Rebuild should do this as well. And because we cannot, at the moment, we still have variations depending on the path. So our approach now is just to rebuild in the same path. And S Build supports this, and the build info file has the path, but Dev Rebuild doesn't set this option. So if you know Perl, please have a look at Dev Rebuild. Like, please, and this is just me looking a bit at it. There's, I'm sure there's more bugs in it. And besides that, it's working nicely, except when it doesn't. And at the moment, with all these bugs, I could reproduce like 5% of the packages or something. And so that was not good. And then there's more issues, of course, but they are now the minor ones or the minor ones. This is annoying bug that um, if you do a source upload, it's called named AMD64 build info, which causes problems if then the AMD64 build is coming and there's the security team is not happy about this. Um, then the build demons, they use a tainted build environment because they have a file in user local and dpackage now complains and says uh, that's a tainted build environment and that's in the build info file and it just looks bad if the official builds have a tainted build environment. And actually there's good progress in the bugs. I'm quite hopeful over this one. And bin and M use, in my opinion, are still a very fragile concept. And even if we solve this with modifying the change log, I think there's a better way to do it, but that's further along the line. And equally further along the line, there's a bug in up that it should warn when packages are not reproducible, but at the moment we can only do it based on CI results and not on rebuilder results, so this bug is far away. Um, yeah, and these are the issues. Um, we are very happy that the release team changed the testing migration that it's blocked now for binary uploads, so you need to do a new uh, source upload as it doesn't migrate to testing which was a nice way from the release team. Some people are unhappy about the new requirement, which I think is just a case of need, improved, needed improved tooling. But in general, we are very happy that this is the case. In theory, Bullseye should not have any builds made on developer machines. So that means we are guaranteed to have built info files and the same environment. That is good. Um, we also like the idea of accelerating testing migration for reproducible packages, which is something the release team talked about. We talked about it last year in Brazil. Uh, I wanted to remind people of the idea, so not to punish people for unreproducible package, but to um, give people a carrot for the reproducible packages. And similarly, we would, for packages must be reproducible. That's too early for Debian policy but maybe it's time for packages must not regress. So if they were reproducible, they must not become unreproducible. We will need exceptions for that because we want security updates even if they are unreproducible or introduce unreproducibleness. But anyway, we need rebuilders and all the stuff for that before we can have this and that this must not regress enforced. Um, so to sum this all up, um, fixing that rebuild should be rather straightforward if you know Perl and if you have time and if you know the Debian archive, but there should be some people listening. I know very basic Perl. Um, distributing build info files is really hard on the one hand. And on the other hand, it's also crucial because without build info files, we cannot have reproducible builds. And if we don't have built info files for security updates, yeah, having, we want 100% reproducible or, yeah. And then we need to discuss also how to do rebuilders and who, which rebuilders to trust and how many rebuilders we have. But at first I want one rebuilder. The Debian is rebuilding its own packages twice. We're not doing this yet because of the bugs in Dev rebuild and the missing build info files. So this is why I think I'm not so 
much just looking forward, so much not forward, um, positively to bullseye and reproducible. We'll see, maybe we can fix this. For now, I would like to thank you for listening to this and for all your contributors. And do you think reproducible builds should happen? If so, please pick one of these bugs and help fix it. If each of you fixes one bug, there's only 20 in this talk. So if you fi fix one and you fix one and maybe I fix one, we could make it, uh, hopefully. This is the only other URL, um, wiki Debian org slash reproducible builds, where all these bugs in Debian are listed. If you generally have want information about reproducible builds, go to our project webpage, reproducible builds org, which has lots of info. If you just want the Debian bugs, they are still on this wiki page. There's a list of bugs. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Holger. So time to questions and answers. So let's start with the first one. Um, it seems to me a bunch of the blockers for Debian to be reproducible are hard bugs, like GCC bugs, etc. How can we as Debian developers work on that? How many? It's hard to say how many Debian developers work on reproducible builds because many people, like whatever, 50 or 70, have worked on their packages or on their tool chain. Um, and there's a bunch of people who constantly work on it. I would say it's a between five and 10 people. Okay. Um, what could Debian do to have infrastructure to rebuild Debian packages? Well, what could Debian do um, to have the infrastructure? Um, I think it's first, it's not the question of the Deb. It doesn't matter whether it's a Debian net or Debian org machine. Um, and we have hardware, but um, these bugs about the, the distributing build info files is mostly the FTP team domain and it's running on FTP master. Um, so it's only this group of people could do it. Or if we change the implementation and put the build info file into the binary packages, that's something the dpackage maintainer needs to do. And so we are, stuck here. Um, yeah, we're stuck here. Okay. The next question, if we were to not ship packages that are not proposed for Bullseye, will you get a working distro? No. No, there's some core packages um, which are not reproducible. I don't know which one, but there's um, we have 3,000 key packages, and out of the, these key packages, which are not even a complete distro, but from the key packages, something like 150 are not reproducible. Um, but what, what we need to change is to change this. We need to fix to both. We need to fix the packages that they become reproducible, but also we need to fix the infrastructure. Like what I said, when there's a security update, this build info file is not published until there's a point release. So we need to fix both the infrastructure and the packages. Right, the next one. Should we remove packages from testing that are from all binary uploads? What was the question again? Yes, um, should we remove packages from testing that are from all binary uploads? Uh, no. As long as they're uploaded with a build info file, that's totally fine. The problem is the problem with these arch all packages that we have packages which were arch all packages which were uploaded before the year 2016 when there was no build info support in the package. And these packages from before 2016, these are the problem, and there are 3,000 of them, 3,000 source packages. So. And these cannot be been in a mute. There need to be sourceful uploads for them. So what I could do is I could create a list of these 3,000 packages, do a for loop, download the sources, 
uh, do an automatic change, change stock change of re-upload for reproducible builds or whatever, and do 3,000 uploads. But there I would rely on GPG that I downloaded the right source and stuff. I would not, but I'm not sure if I should do that. If people tell me I should do that, I'm happy to create this for loop. That's, that's very simple. Okay. Our next question is, um, well, it's a kind of, at the beginning of comment, uh, Jay for third only upload. And thank you for you bringing up this point in the talk. By the way, is there any plans to allow for source only upload for the initial upload a new package? Or are there still too many technical issues to overcome? For example, routing to build.debian.org and uploading the results to the new Kiwi. Um, about this requirement that there needs to be binary uploads for the new queue, I have no idea why this is the case. Uh, I don't think it is needed, but this is something which is not related to reproducible builds. I'm not involved in FT running FTP master. I don't know. The next question. How can newcomers help with reproducible builds project in Debian? Um, for one, we have an IRC channel and a mailing list, so you can join there. Um, if you are, we have thousand pet bucks with patches in the BTS, so you could also do a NMU campaign and do lots of uploads. Like there's more than thousand patches in packages which need uploads to Debian. So, and then we also have lots of inventorized, categorized issues um, where we know what kind of problem it is, but we don't have the solution. So you could try to find these solutions. Okay, um, this is a comment from Andreas Thiele. Uh, I not working actively, but I try to upload a package with a patch concerning reproducible builds in the next 24 hours. Uh, another comment, uh, I could support no regression rule. And a question from Bray Grant. Should we consider checking reproducibility John a pure binary package basis rather than the source package to give a more fine gain view of reproducibility? Um, what, can you repeat the last part of the question again, please? Yes, of course. Uh, should we consider checking reproducibility on a peer binary package basis rather than source package to give a more fun, fine grained view of reproducibility? I still didn't get it, sorry. Um, I lost the pad. If you just could point me to the pad again on IRC, I will just look at the pad myself and see the question there. Can you put the okay. pet URL on IRC and the whatever? Yeah, in DEFCON 20 talks. Thank you. Thank you, Foxboron. Good. It's loading the clipboard. So where is the question? Which one from who? From that is the last one. Uh, whether we should check the reproducible on a binary package basis instead of on a source package. Uh, Well, we need to do the rebuilds on a binary package base anyway, because a rebuild, um, you need to look for each binary package, um, which was the build info file. And for one, like one source package on one architecture can be built on several architectures, because a 
binary it can produce binary any and all um, packages. So the for whatever the i3 and i386 package binary packages are built on i386, but the arch all packages are a, on AMD64. So you need to download both build info files and then um, do these builds. So in a way, we will not checking the reproducibility, but we will check what the binary packages on a not a source base. And this this also makes it difficult that we are we are source we have source base the source based view and the binary package based view. But for rebuilding we need to use a different different view which doesn't really it's 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 more or less arbitrary where it's done. So we need to look in, in the build info file to see which pack, um, binary packages were built there, and it can be different per package, per upload, per version. Great. Let me see if we have more questions on IRC. Okay, so I think these are all the comments and the questions. So would you like to add something else? Well, I, I'll put the, add the slides um, to, to the talk page and um, I'm happy to discuss this, the slides or the content of the talk via mail or IRC. I think I slightly prefer mail to the repository bills list than IRC at the moment because it's the rest of summer and I might be a bit more outside the next days, so mail might be better. But yeah, I'm very curious about your feedback, uh, especially from FTP team, release team, deep package maintainers, um, people who know Perl. I would love to see patches for that rebuild. And I'm glad I had the opportunity to share these findings with you and I hope we'll get a better better reproducible bullseye than I feel. Thank you. Thank you very much for all your efforts and work in the reproducible builds, uh, Holger, and for this wonderful talk. Thanks a lot.